So let's begin. Uh, so hello and welcome everyone to this maintainer track session on revolutionizing Kubernetes logging. Uh, my name is Naman Lakhwani, and I am a final year student from India. Previously, I was an intern at VMware, and I started my open source journey two years ago in 2021 with the Google Summer of Code program in the CNCF Thanos project. And in the same year, I got a chance to contribute as a Linux Foundation mentee in the Kubernetes project. Uh, and it was the first time I was introduced to the Kubernetes community and the software. And today, here I am giving my first conference talk. So thank you, everyone, for coming and joining me here. It is going to be a great session. So today, on agenda, we have logging, structured logging, and contextual logging. We will start with the basic introduction of Kubernetes logging, and then we will dive deep into the structured and contextual logging one by one, and we'll see various code examples and performance metrics and various design decisions which were discussed during this work. Yeah, so let's begin with the uh, Kubernetes logging. So we all know it's a crucial aspect of uh, containerized applications. We can uh, monitor the health and performance of our applications with the help of Kubernetes logs. And it's very crucial aspect of the whole Kubernetes ecosystem. The logs can be generated from various sources, uh, from the uh, application containers, the Kubernetes system components like etcd, uh, uh, API server, and et cetera. Also from the nodes, right? Uh, so we all know Kubernetes logs are a bit messy, right? So uh, if we want to troubleshoot any issue, and if we are, then we will have to go through all the logs in the terminal to get the idea of what is happening. And what if uh, the logs are coming from various sources? Uh, so log aggregation is a technique which is used to centralize all the logs at a common place so that the query can be searched and run at a single place and we use uh, solutions like Elasticsearch for that. Uh, so logs can also be used while for monitoring, and we can set alerts uh, for certain log events so that when certain log events happen, uh, the uh, developers and engineers can get the alerts on their emails and flag that something has broken. And for that, tools like Prometheus and Grafana are highly used in the ecosystem. right? Uh, and for all these uh, solutions to work, like Prometheus or Elasticsearch, we need to have some standard log formatting, right? Because previously, it was in whole plain text. And it was very difficult to build any solution which can work uh, in all these scenarios. So uh, standard log formatting is very necessary for, to, for the solutions to work. And for that, uh, structured logging was like proposed in the community. So the main motivation behind structured logging was uh, because the parsing, processing, as well as querying the logs was hard, right? And it uh, forced the developers to rely on some ad hoc solutions like regular expressions. Uh, and they can't build a proper solution which can work in every scenario, right? Uh, so structured logging was proposed, and the main uh, use cases and main ideas behind the structured logging were to define a standard structure for Kubernetes logs uh, among all the Kubernetes components, then to add the methods in K-log to enforce this new standard log formatting, and to configure Kubernetes components to produce logs in JSON format. We will be seeing why JSON and nothing else in the coming slides. So the goals are very much similar to the proposal, like to make the most common logs more queryable, uh, introduce new k-log methods, and to also to simplify ingestion of logs into third-party solutions like Elasticsearch or Prometheus. With this, we are not replacing k-log or the way it is used. Also, we are not doing uh, structuring of all the logs in Kubernetes, only the main components which are in high views. 
So this is the log message structure, which was uh, finalized after having consensus from the community. So in, the, in this log structure, we will have the message followed by the key value pairs, like key one, value one, and key two, value two. So this is the uh, standard log formatting, which we are talking about. So two methods, uh, info s and error s methods were introduced in klog library where S, S stands for structure. You can see the declaration of the info S method. The first parameter is the message string and followed by key values. So in the example, we are calling the info S method somewhere in the Kubernetes code. The pod status updated is the message and pod is one key corresponding to cube DNS, cube DNS is its value, then status and then radius. So corresponding key value pairs. And you can see the result in the logs which we will, we will get uh, in the terminal when we will inspect the pod. So pod status updated, we get the message. Then pod equal cube DNS, key one, value one. And status equal ready, key two, value two, right? Similarly, for error s, the declaration was the first parameter is error, the actual error. Then the message string, and then the key values. So in the example, we are uh, passing error as the first uh, argument, and the, then the message uh, failed to update pod status. In this particular example, we don't have any key values, but we can have some. As the result, uh, you can see that we get the first string, the message string, and error equal timeout, which can be different in different scenarios. So the idea is to use Kubernetes API first approach to get Kubernetes objects. So these two methods were also added in the Klog. The first one is K object, second one is K ref. The K object methods takes object metadata as the input, and K ref takes namespace and name in the form of a string as the input. And both of the methods return object ref struct in the output and object ref struct has name and namespace as its field. Uh, we will see the example. So yeah. Uh, so in the example we can see in the first line we are creating a pod object with the pod name cube DNS and namespace cube system. And instead of passing the pod name uh, in while we are calling info s method, we are passing now pass, now passing the Kubernetes object. So k log dot k object, and in the brackets we have pod. So you can see in the red, right? And in the second example, uh, instead of passing object, we are passing it by the reference. The uh, first argument is cube system, which is, is which is the namespace, and cube DNS is the name. And the general uh, formatting is namespace slash name. So in the output result, you can see that pod equal to cube system slash cube DNS, right? So namespace slash name. And uh, if we have already have the pod object, we can pass it uh, as a pod object. Otherwise, we can pass it by reference. So you might be thinking by JSON and nothing else. So uh, there are many pros of using JSON uh, because it is broadly adopted by logging libraries with very efficient implementations then it is easily parsable, transformable, and also human readable as well. We also have solutions like uh, jQuery, which we can use with JSON. So JSON was finalized as the standard output format. So you can see the example here. Uh, TS is the timestamp, then verbosity is four. And you can see the pod object, uh, name is cube DNS and name space is cube system. So it is very, easy to parse JSON and use it. So let's see the performance metrics, like we migrated from plain text log to st structured logs. So what is the performance, or whether we improved or like not? So you can see that for text, the InfoS implementation, which is the new implementation, is 9% slower than the InfoS. Right, but for JSON, InfoS implementation is 77% faster than InfoS. 
So you can see that uh, JSON InfoF is taking 1406 nanoseconds per operation, while JSON InfoS only takes 319 nanoseconds per operation, which is 77% faster. So it's a huge improvement which has been made. Now let's uh, speak about and discuss about uh, contextual logging, which is based on the GoLogger API. And uh, the GoLogger API is designed around structured logging only and supports attaching additional information to a logger. So there are two design decisions which are made for contextual logging. One is we can attach the logger as a value to the context. Also, we can retrieve the logger from the context. Right? So these are two design decisions which were made. So here are some use cases of having uh, contextual logging. We can add a prefix with the help of with name method. And we can also add key value pairs with the help of with value method in, to the logger. Uh, also, when we are running unit tests, uh, if any test fails, we will not see the uh, error logs from all the pods. We will only see, from all the tests, we will only see uh, the logs for the current failing test. So this is another use of contextual logging. Also, we can change the verbosity of log messages. So this is the practical uh, real world example of having contextual logging. So uh, there is a developer, John, who wants to know which pod and which operation and a scheduler plugin log messages are associated with. So if there is no contextual logging, it will be very difficult to find out uh, like with which plugin log messages are associated. But if we have the contextual logging, we can add, use the uh, with value function, like logger dot with value, and pass the pod object to the logger and attach the pod object to the logger. And in the final output log, we will get this prefix in the logs, like nominated pod slash filter slash volume binding. So with this, we will be able to know that there is something happening with the volume and the storage. And we can like uh, check further with this help. So the goals were to remove direct log calls through kids.io log library, and to grant the caller of a function control over logging uh, inside that function. But we are not removing the key log text output format, or we are not, we are not deprecating key log. It is text uh, output format is still present, and we are using key log. So there are various risks while using contextual logging. So one is uh, uninitialized logger. We can't use uninitialized logger. We have to initialize it, initialize it properly. Then there is performance overhead. Like we are passing logger to every function. So we have to also check about the performance. Like it should not uh, uh, deprecate much. Uh, we can pass logger in two ways as an explicit parameter, or we can attach it to the context. So here is the code example, which we can see. So initially, and the snapshot was not taking any input, but we have changed it to take logger as an explicit parameter. And in the last line, you can see we are passing logger to this uh, snapshot method. But from where this logger is coming from? So we are uh, retrieving this logger from the context, assuming CTX is present in that particular function. We are uh, retrieving the logger. Then we are attaching the pod object to this logger, like uh, klog dot logger with values, the old logger, and the pod object. So this is this line is updating the old logger to the new one, and we can use this logger, but we also have to update the context. So we are also updating the context with the help of klog dot new context method, and passing the old context and the logger. So this new context will contain the new logger, and we are using it. So the output will look like this. So 
you can see the last line. It is the structured log, uh, but we can't say from where it is originating, from where it is coming. But the f uh, if you see the binder dot go, the second line in the red, you can see prefilter slash volume binding is the prefix which is attached to this log. So with this, we can say there is an inline volume which cannot be created because storage is exhausted. Right. So contextual logging is like, let's say there are three functions A, B, C, and function A calls function B, and function B calls function C. And there is any error from function C, then if you don't have contextual logging, it will be very hard to say why it is failing and which function is calling this function C. But if we have contextual logging, the logger will be passed from A to B and B to C. And in the output, we will see the prefix, right? So we can say, then we can determine that uh, function C is failing because it is being called by function A. So the current status of uh, structured logging is in GA, general availability. The contextual logging is ready to get promoted to beta. There is a recent PR which has been opened. Currently, it is in alpha stage. Uh, if this is something which excited you and you want to uh, involve in the community, you can join the structured logging working group in the Slack, in the Kubernetes Slack. Also, we have bi-weekly meetings running every Thursdays at 3.30 PM British timing. And uh, if you want to see the current and past work on GitHub regarding this work, you can search for the label wg-structured-logging. And you can help us in solving issues and reviewing the PRs. So CAP1602 is about structured logging. And CAP3077 is about contextual logging. So if you want to read further, you can uh, click to these links and uh, check it out. And when we are migrating from plain text to structured or contextual logging, uh, we have to keep in mind certain instructions uh, because, as we saw, there are performance overheads and various risks. So we have to keep those in mind. And this document uh, documents all the instructions for that. Uh, yeah. So thank you. And if you have any questions, we have Meng Jiao and Shivanshu. Uh, from SIG instrumentation, so feel free to ask any questions.